No, well, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine. Um, just wanted to say, uh, starting right off the bat, now I did some research on you before we talked. I read all about all your amazing accomplishments. And I think there's one quote that I want to get your comment on. And you said, and this may, to the average person, they may be like, huh? But other, but you would, you can probably perfectly encapsulate this. You said, my accident was the best thing that ever happened to me. Explain that because I think that one quote really describes you and your journey thus far. I absolutely think that the my accident is the best thing that's ever happened to me because, you know, before my accident, I was that type of athlete and that type of person that, you know, just went through the motions in life. They felt like uh, they were entitled. I felt like I was entitled and things should just be handed to me. I'd never really understood what hard work was. Mm -hmm. um, and even being an athlete, I was just... It was just some, I never went above and beyond in the classroom. So kind of having something like this happen to me, it just made me realize what was important. It made me work harder for things. And it made me appreciate, you know, the hard work it takes to get to a place. And when it finally pays off, that feeling is incredible. Um, and it just made me mature, like very, very quickly. Um, I mean, it hasn't changed the type of person I am. It just kind of uplifted me a little bit and made me more positive. I'm not as negative, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it just... It just kind of really made me think, okay, going through the motions the last 19 years is not going to get you like, you shouldn't be happy with doing that. You should always go into something and doing the best that you can possible, always applying yourself. Um, so it's been incredible to kind of go through everything that I have and then to be able to share it with people. I mean, I love telling my story and I love kind of talking, especially with kids, especially yeah. kids at middle school and kids in high school. I tell them, listen, you're sitting there right now. And like, some of you might think that they don't have to put in work. They have to, they don't have to do anything that you should want to put in as much as you can. And you don't want to look back one day and realize you just went through the motions because I did and it sucked. That was the worst feeling ever. <laughs> now, again, watching you on the show has been very inspirational for a lot of people. Um, you know, especially people who haven't had to overcome certain things in their life and they look at what you can do and then they look at themselves. How has the feedback been and, um, and, 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 and it must have really touched you to have a lot of that inspiration, a lot of that support come back to you, have all that love come back. Oh my God. It's been, it's been incredible. And it's been, it's been so amazing, especially these last few days. I mean, it really has made, you know, me getting voted off a lot easier because I'm getting all these amazing messages from so many people. Um, and you know, it just makes you feel great. It just makes you feel like, like you actually like touched people's lives. And that's what I wanted to do from the beginning. I wanted to go into this game, creating a positive life for the amputee community, for the disabled community. Um, and I wanted to help people who are disabled, who are going through difficult times that don't believe that they could do anything now. I wanted to show them that, that they can, because for me, it was me seeing other people who were disabled, you know, go to the Paralympics and do all these amazing, that's what inspired me. So I kind of just wanted to return the favor. Um, but what's incredible is just the whole survivor community of just, you know, the fans, especially, you know, previous players reaching out. It's, it's been amazing. Um, and it really has made this whole, uh, you know, this last week be very easy. And I mean, my phone, my phone just, it continues to still blow up. I mean, it's <laughs> something I have to be grateful for because I, I do realize that, you know, survivor contestants, um, when they, sometimes when they go out of the game, they can get negative, uh, negative attention. Um, yeah. so it's something I have to be grateful for. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I mean, I, re I say this, I really couldn't have gone out a better way. Yeah. I wouldn't have done, redone anything even though maybe there are some things I could have done. <laughs> now, looking at the, you know, getting to the game itself, um, did you have a sense that you were a threat and you were going home before that tribal? I thought that, you know, I was playing a good game, but I didn't think that I was the biggest threat out there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I thought Carla was playing a 10 times better game than I, than I was um, at that point. And so that's why I wanted to get her out, especially because she had an idol. Um, so, I mean, I knew that like, I mean, up until the James vote, I thought I had done nothing. I was just like, I'm literally just going, like, I just, I'm kind of just being carried and like, I keep getting blindsided. Like I want to start playing this game and I want to make a move. Right. Um, so I think having the James vote and the next day having that reward challenge, uh, low key kind of put the nail in the coffin for me because <laughs> people are realizing not only am I 
playing a good social game because every time my number one would get voted off, I would always be able to adapt and find another person, but that I was doing well in, uh, doing well in the challenges. So it makes sense after watching it. It makes complete sense because I didn't think I played that great of a game, but after watching it, um, you know, I want to, that, that it's, it's really cool to, you know, especially go out in the game in a respectful way where people, nobody wants to sit next to you. Yeah. You have to respect it. Now, I wonder if this played, do you think this played a part in you being voted out? Now, I spoke to Janine and she talked about something called a social paralysis. And she said that you cannot stick your neck out too much. You can't play too hard. We saw a lot of players go home for doing that. Do you, th yeah. do you, do you think, do you, did you feel out there that kind of paralysis? And did that play a part in, in you going home? Because you did try in the last few, you did try to make some very big moves. Yeah, I absolutely think that's the that was the theme of our season. I mean, if you did anything too big, anything too loud, you were you were on everybody's list to go home. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you have to adjust how everybody else is playing. Right. And so how everybody else is playing, it's in a very quiet way, but it doesn't mean that it's a, in a bad way. It means they're doing it in a really smart way where people can't really see that you're playing a great game until it's, you know, until it's time where it's the end and you can actually explain it. So I a hundred percent agree with that because I definitely stuck my neck out and I was just kind of sick of, you know, playing a quiet game. I was also, I wasn't in the majority at all. I was yeah. never in the seven. So I was just like, I'm sick of this. Why can't I just get rid of people from the seven? And maybe that will make people want to work with me. Um, so I was trying to do it in a loud, but trustworthy way. I always told Jesse everything I was doing. Like, even when we got split up, we all had an inkling that when we were going to split five and five, yeah. um, I told Jesse, listen, I told people in my alliance, listen, I didn't know that whoever lost, we were going to go on a completely different island. But I said, if you feel like you're uncomfortable, I'm going to give you my advantage and you can use it. Like, if you're, right. if you're, you have two and like three people against you, um, so when it just worked out because I knew James was a really great player in this game. I mean, he had great relationships with everybody. So that's a big reason why I wanted to get him out. Also, he had knowledge of power and I just didn't want to deal with it. Um, so I told Jesse, listen, if I'm with James, I'm voting him out um, and I'm going to do it this way. So maybe not. I mean, it was, I mean, the, I think the downfall in my game is I literally would just trust everything that Jesse would say. Yeah. Jesse told me to jump off a bridge. I would have jumped off a bridge. So, I mean, it's just comes to show you that like he was playing the game in a really great way because not all he could put his feelings aside. He could, yeah. and he could realize, okay, this is what I need to do to potentially get further. So yeah. Play with his head and, and not his heart. It seemed. And yeah, it's for people watching kind of explain to them why, you know, we saw Cody and we saw Jesse kind of burn you here and burn you there. Why did you still have faith in them? Or was it the fact that, well, these are the people, these are the cards you were kind of dealt? Um, no, I mean, I mean, they always did a really great job whenever they blindsided me with the Justine vote and with the Dwight vote, they would come back and like afterwards they would talk to me and be like, and they would be like, listen, this has nothing to do with you and your gameplay. Yeah. This has nothing to do with that. So yeah. they always did a really great job at communicating with me. And so that's what made me feel comfortable with moving forward with working with them. Um, and I mean, I just, I, I just always wanted to, you know, after, you know, going through everything we did with Vessi with like having a couple losing streak, uh, a couple immunity challenges, and then coming off of winning and like this big, like we bonded and it was something that I was like, okay, well, I want to work with them for the rest of the game because you know, it's different when you start off with people. Yeah. Um, I just needed to separate that. I knew I had, I mean, I had a great relationship with Owen and I think that's what made me um, kind of like a big threat in their eyes because every time I did get my number one voted off, I was able to adapt and like move. I mean, the Dwight vote, it was really like a punch in the face because me and Dwight, I mean, he was my number one out there. Um, yeah even to the point where like he literally would give me his extra sweatshirt at night. And I remember when he was walking off and he got voted out and I wanted to pull um, uh, an Angelina and be like, can I have your coat? Like, I... <laughs> But yeah, so, I mean, they just saw, I mean, every time um, I was able to adapt and I was able to go to Owen and I had a, I had a great alliance with Owen 
because he held on to my advantage ever since so I got voted off. He held yeah. it, he held on to it all up until I had to grab I had to reach in a sock at tribal council and take <laughs> it out. So now, now yeah. I ask this of everybody that I've I've talked to, all the, the different contestants that I've interviewed, but um, you know, they can only show so much on the show every week and they, but they film 24 hours a day. Is there anything about your journey and your story, whether it's a moment, some a strategy, was there anything that you wish they would have included in the show that you didn't see? Yeah. So I actually, um, lied to everybody. I didn't tell them I was a Paralympian. Um, I said oh. I was a lacrosse coach. Um, um, and I, that was just part of my strategy and kind of, I just didn't want to get all this attention on my story and everything. Like I was trying to just be quiet about it. I mean, yeah. obviously like I would tell people how I lost my leg and everything, but I, I just never would be like, oh, like this is my life and this is what right. I do. And then, so I just, and especially watching the show, like all these professional athletes, they always lie. And my mom is like the biggest diehard survivor fan as well. So she's like, you can't tell anybody like this is. My mom was like trying to coach me. I was like, okay, I won't tell anybody. Um, but I mean, I so that was just like a really interesting thing. Um, and I tell people, I'm like, well, I mean, it kind of it was the thought process. And when I sat out of that second immunity challenge, uh, the snake one, like I couldn't right. argue the fact as to why I should be doing this. Right. Um, but yeah, so that's it was just like kind of part of my gameplay. I didn't really want to create like this big loud thing. I just said I was a lacrosse coach. I mean, if I went out there saying, Yeah, I'm a professional athlete, I run my own foundation. Yeah. And I'm also a motivational speaker. I'm like everyone would be like, Okay, no, like bye. <laughs> <laughs> now, now one final question, because they're giving me the cue here, but I wanted to get this in. Please tell us about your born to run foundation, what it yeah. does. Um, what you do for people. Because here in Canada, we have things a little bit different where people can get, you know, the help they need and most of the uh, cost is covered. But obviously yeah. it's a different situation there. So please tell us about your foundation, what it does and how people can support you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so the Born to Run Foundation, I started it because typically when you become an amputee, um, you need an everyday walking leg and insurance yeah. companies will only cover that, which makes sense. I mean, an uh, everyday walking leg for an above knee amputee, if you want a microprocessor knee, it can be like oh, $60,000, $50,000, yeah. $60,000. And so if you want a specialized leg, which means like if you want a running blade or if you want a waterproof leg or a snowboarding leg, right. those are not covered by insurance. Um, and you're basically kind of all on your own with paying for it. And they can range anywhere from ten dollars to $30,000. Wow. So um me personally i had received three different specialized prosthetics donated to me from foundations and so seeing the work that they do for other people that really inspired me um and it really made me think okay well, i've received all this incredible support and i want to i want to give it back um so that's that's what we do and in four years we've been able to donate 21 or 22 different specialized prosthetics wow. um so it's been it's been incredible um but I just kind of want to be that mentor and that positive light for people that, I mean, I had for me, I mean, I got to, I got to meet a lot of the Boston marathon survivors from the Boston marathon bombing wow. and all these Paralympians and people who have basically taken me under their wing. So that support, I mean, I, I knew I needed to give it back. Um, and luckily I have an amazing family. My mom is a superhero and helps me run it. Um, and so it's incredible to see, especially when we donate, it just comes full circle to me right. because I was the same person sitting in that position, just wanting a prosthetic. And so to be able to gift it and see their reaction and their family's reaction, it's just, it's an incredible feeling. Well, I'm going to wrap it up now, but I just wanted to say, you know, hand to heart, you are very amazing on this season. You're inspirational to so many people, whether, you know, um, uh, fortunate, less fortunate, you've been, your story is incredible. Continue with all the good work. Best of luck to the future. And again, so I'm sure you're hearing from tons of people. It was amazing watching you and in your entire journey. And I think Thank what you. you taught people more than anything else is you can get knocked down, but you but it's how you get back up that makes the difference yeah. in the world. So failing doesn't mean you're a failure. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for thanks so much for sharing your story and Thank going out. Thank you so out. much. Thank you Take so care. much. For